What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Ranger Suarez, who had 5Ks in four innings, giving up two runs. He had this vicious front door two-seamer, and I love this home plate view because it shows you just how hard that is to hit and why you might duck out of the way of it, despite the fact that this is the location of that pitch on the pitch tracker. He also had these fastballs and curveball. And he faced Wade Miley, who had four strikeouts in six and a third innings, giving up four runs, and had these nasty cutters. This was also the last Peacock TV game of the year, and the guys brought Devin Williams on to yeah, surprise us. You, you have we, had, such a, good, you have you. had such a good year we with us. You are a you. huge part of what we do. Come on We're bringing here. in. Come on in here, bro. Ladies and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Devin Williams, <laughs> the number one fan of that man right there. Pitch, what would you want to say to Pitching Ninja right now, Devin? You know, I owe him a lot. You know, he named my, my change up. Um, you know, he gives me a lot of notoriety. Airbender, that's a great, that's a great name. So, so Ninja, I wish he could hear you, but you heard his messages to you. Congratulations, uh, Rob. Uh, honestly, seriously, you, what you do makes what we do a whole lot easier and uh, shed some light on some of the things that, that not a whole lot of people see out there. So, so Rob, great season. Hope to see you back here, back here next year, Rob. Absolutely. It's been great. Sandy Alcantara had three Ks in eight innings, giving up two earned runs and had this curveball and changeup. He outdueled Josiah Gray, who had two Ks in four innings, giving up three runs and had this breaking ball. Michael King had four strikeouts in five innings, giving up one run and had these two seamers. He faced Christian Javier, who had eight Ks in six innings, giving up three runs and had these fastballs, sliders, and changeups. Tyler Anderson had five strikeouts in five and a third innings, giving up three runs. He got Ks on his fastball, changeup, and cutter. And I love him messing with timing here, as if his normal mechanics aren't funky enough. He had to throw in an exaggerated leg hang. He faced off against Kyle Muller, who had three Ks in five innings, giving up three runs and had this curveball. Jack Flaherty had seven Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up four runs. He had this cutter and curveballs. He faced Zach Gallen, who had four strikeouts in five and a third innings, but gave up five runs. He's now dropped to a 13-to-1 underdog in the Cy Young race, with Blake Snell now being the solid favorite. Gallen had this knuckle curve and changeup. Kevin Gosman had five Ks in four innings, giving up three runs and had these fastballs and splitters. Tyler McGill had six Ks in five and a third innings, giving up three earned runs and had this elevated changeup and slider. He faced George Kirby, who had three Ks in three innings, giving up three earned runs. Kirby had these fastballs and splitters. I love how deliberately George Kirby grabs his splitter grip. I think he's still getting used to it. As you might remember, he borrowed this grip from Kevin Gosman, and it's a very complicated grip. How did you start using Gosman's splitter grip without having a relationship with him? <laughs> I saw it on Pitching Ninja once, and I was like, you know, I'm going to try this. And the way Kirby makes sure a hitter doesn't see him change his grip in his glove, you can see him butterfly his glove to hide any grip changes. Now, of course, a hitter may look for muscles moving in his forearm, but you can see how the butterflying of his glove kind of masks it. Seth Lugo had four Ks in six scoreless innings. He had this front door two-seamer and back door sweeper, as well as this curveball with 3,354 RPMs. I think Jock Peterson spun at about 110 RPMs after swinging at this pitch. Alex Cobb had three Ks in three innings, giving up four runs. He had this two-seamer just off the plate, as well as this dirty splitter. Chris Spires had seven Ks in four innings, giving up three runs, and had these elevated sliders and change-up. And he faced Jamison Tyone, who had seven Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up five runs, and had this fastball and nasty curveball. Zach Thompson had six Ks in seven innings, giving up three runs. He had this fastball, curveball, and cutter, and then gave a big fist pump. I thought it was a really solid outing from Thompson. Chris Sale had five Ks in five innings, giving up no runs, and had these sliders, and picked up a White Castle special with a side of sword. Taj Bradley had seven Ks in five innings, giving up one earned run, and had these fastballs, curveballs for a sword, and changeup. He faced off against Zay Curry, who had six Ks in five and a third innings, giving up only one earned run, and had this fastball, slider, and curveball. Tarek Skubal was kind of nasty yesterday with seven Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs. He had this four-seam fastball and sinker, as well as this slider, knuckle curve, and changeup. I definitely like Skubal's stuff. John Gray had a good outing yesterday with eight strikeouts and five innings, giving up three runs. He was painting with his fastballs 
and had these nasty sliders, including this vicious back foot slider. He faced Kenta Maeda, who had three Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and had this nasty slider. Charlie Morton had three Ks in four innings, giving up two runs. He had this elevated curveball, and this curveball with 3,236 RPMs that got the sword. He also threw this curveball to Mookie Betts that was in the other batter's box and got a sword. Yikes. Mookie also saved Charlie some pitches this game by forgetting how many outs there were. Even the most talented players in baseball sometimes mess up. Here's an overlay of Morton's fastball and curveball, and you can see just how much that curveball breaks. Morton faced yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Bobby Miller. I love the way Miller stepped up against this vaunted Braves lineup that has virtually no weakness. He had 5 Ks in 7 innings, giving up only 1 run on 3 hits and shut the Braves down with his 100-mile-an-hour fastball. He even got a KO on this 99-mile-an-hour heater. Ninja referee Steve Willis, count this man out. And Miller also threw in some filthy change-ups. Miller has the stuff to be an ace in this league for a long time, and I thought yesterday went a long way to showing him how good he can be. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Jose Alvarado had these wicked cutters. Dylan Lee had this fastball. Bruce Stark Ratterall had this wicked 90-mile-an-hour slider. Zach Greinke didn't pitch particularly well this game as the bulk guy, but I kind of love this interaction with him and Salvi, where Greinke calls the pitch on Pitchcom, and Salvi points to the location. Josh Hader had these nasty sliders and overpowering fastball. Adam Adovino had three Ks thanks to his fastballs and sweeper. And my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Abner Uribe. Uribe had this Expelliarmus sinker. He also had this ridiculous 100-mile-an-hour sinker. I know it's a ball, but look at the drop on this thing. Just disgusting. And he also picked up a White Castle special with these six sliders. Throwing 100-mile-an-hour sinkers with that movement and these sliders, he is going to be a force to be reckoned with for years to come. Remember, Uribe is just a rookie. And now my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. Check out 71-year-old Ron Washington shaking his booty in the dugout who decided to pair up his dance mechanics with John Travolta from Pulp Fiction. Virtually identical. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to start off with the same game parlay of Logan Webb for 5Ks or more and Justin Steele for 6Ks or more. And I'm going to top it off with Cole Reagans for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 